of hectares of agricultural land have been degraded and became useless for agricultural production, water resources have also diminished and water has become scarce. As land degrades, agricultural productivity is reduced and resource quality deteriorates. Several factors have led to the appearance and aggravation of these problems. For example, the extensive development for agricultural operations in the modern era, extensive use of inappropriate farming techniques, and the intensification of cropping in order to obtain larger quantities of production to meet the increased human demand for food. This applies to the agricultural environment in most Arab countries, including Syria. And the situation is more difficult under our rain-fed cereal production systems due to the fluctuating amounts of rainfall and improper distribution during the growing season. Our agriculture is characterized by extensive and excessive cultivation in cropland, prior to crop establishment, and in orchards, whether they are irrigated or rain-fed. Burning of rain-fed crop residues is also a big problem when farmers grow irrigated secondary crops. As organic matter and nutrients are lost and smoke pollutes the atmosphere, some farmers reduce the stubble through the introduction of sheep to graze crop residues and provide some income. This is not necessarily a problem unless it leads to overgrazing and wind erosion and causes a decline in land productivity because much of the organic matter is returned to the soil. An urgent need has emerged around the world to make radical changes in agricultural production systems. One such change is the development and adoption of conservation agriculture as a productive and profitable cropping system which does not degrade natural resources but protects soils from the dangers of wind and water erosion. The system of conservation agriculture is an imitation of the original natural agricultural system that prevailed before human intervention and the development of systems relying on heavy cultivation. It is a sustainable alternative to current agricultural systems which have been very harmful, especially for dry areas. Dr. Colin Piggin, Conservation Agriculture Project Manager at the International Center for Agricultural Research in Dry Areas, ICADA, says, The technology of conservation agriculture is very suitable for dry areas as it attempts to get the most benefit from soil moisture. Conservation agriculture has been widely adopted by farmers in many parts of the world, and the area of crops grown around the world with zero tillage, which is a key to conservation cropping, exceeds 100 million hectares. Australia is considered as a pioneer country implementing dryland conservation agriculture. Atif Haddad Conservation Agriculture Project Coordinator at ICADA asked Mr. Colin Norwood, ICADA Farm Manager, about reasons behind the widespread of this technology in a country like Australia. Colin Norwood replies, Because the agricultural inputs such as fuel price and labor costs have become very expensive, and under Australia's prevailing environment, rainfall is very low, which obliges us to apply technologies which enhance yield increase under harsh conditions. What do you think, Colin, about the potential of conservation agriculture in Syria? Syria and the Middle East environment are very similar to Australia, so there should be no constraints to the spread of conservation agriculture. Conservation cropping, a form of conservation agriculture, in brief, is the process of sowing seed and fertilizer into narrow slots in uncultivated soil under stubble from previous crops using special zero-tillage seeders. It includes applying components of an integrated package of crop management based on the following. First, avoid tillage prior to sowing. Use good crop management and wide rotations to maximize production. Second, leave as much crop residue as possible on the soil surface. Third, 
use zero tillage seeders to ensure minimal soil disturbance while planting. Fourth, plant early before or just after the first seasonal break rains. Fifth, use recommended seed rates which are usually much less than presently used by farmers. Dr. Piggin emphasizes these points and stresses the importance of the crop rotation. Rotation between the various groups of crops, such as cereals and legumes, diversifies the system. There's also a need to locate seeds at the proper depth, which enables us to use lower seed rates, and we have found that a seed rate of about 100 kg per hectare is the best. Early seeding is of the utmost importance to achieve good returns because delays in planting dates can lead to a loss of yield by about 10 and even 20 kilograms per hectare per day. Conservation agricultural research conducted by General Commission of Scientific Agricultural Research, GCSAR, in Syria has shown that full or partial retention of crop residues would positively have an impact on stored soil moisture and on the activity of microorganisms and increase their capacity to decompose crop residues, which ultimately contributes to increased soil organic matter. Local and global research has shown that conservation agriculture is yielding better than conventional agriculture, and experiences of other pioneer countries found that conservation agriculture improves soil structure, soil organic matter, as well as the porosity and infiltration, and it improves also recycling of nutrients in the soil, which increases the possibility of obtaining higher yield. Conservation agriculture also reduces erosion and provides higher capacity for carbon sequestration in the soil and prevents the release of greenhouse gases to the atmosphere. Mr. Ali Shahada, specialist of conservation agriculture in the Arab Center for the Studies of Arid and Drylands, AXAD, says, the importance of conservation agriculture is to maintain soil moisture, increase organic matter, save on fertilizer, water, and increase yield. For example, conservation agriculture increases about 25% of wheat and barley yield and saves 30% of water compared to traditional agriculture. So we can grow 4 hectares with conservation agriculture instead of 3 hectares with traditional methods. There's also a saving in the seeding rates of about 25%. Add to that, there's also a saving in field operations and fuel due to one-pass operation. Add to that the savings in time required for cultivation and also saving in the labor force. On the other hand, experiments carried out by ICADA and AXAD in cooperation with the General Commission of Scientific Agricultural Research, GCSAR, have shown that conservation agriculture has a great potential, although some of these experiments have been conducted during very dry years. Results of barley, wheat, oats, chickpeas, lentils indicated that the production of biomass in the stages of early growth, grain yield and straw yield were higher in zero tillage compared to conventional tillage. Results indicated also that yield of early sowing during the October-November was better than late sowing during December-January. Moreover, zero tillage eliminates the cost of at least two cultivations conserves soil moisture and increases water use efficiency. And this provides an opportunity for better growth of crops, which produces good grain even when rain is short in late spring. In lentils, an experiment at ICADA showed that the grain yield of an early planted crop with zero tillage 
reached 1,285 kg per hectare, almost double that of a conventional tillage crop with late planting, which yielded 670 kg per hectare. Many similar comparisons were demonstrated at farmers' fields all over Syria in the past few years, with performance of crops grown under conservation agriculture much better than crops grown in the traditional manner. The majority of farmers were satisfied with the results and they are keen to repeat zero tillage in the future. Farmer Abdel Qadir Masri, who carried out a demonstration field in Aleppo, says, we saved 150 to 200 kg per hectare of wheat seed. Spikes and grains were bigger, and grain yield was better in conservation tillage. But the main constraint that prevented dissemination of conservation agriculture more broadly is availability and high cost of imported zero tillage seeders. So ICADA, in cooperation with GCSAR, supported local seeder manufacturers to develop different prototypes of zero tillage seeders and supervised many technical modifications such as dual application of seed and fertilizer and also considering local conditions and site-specific requirements. For example, large farm sites in East Syria required wide and trailed seeders and stony fields require robust spring-type tines. The locally made zero tillage seeders were repeatedly tested in research stations as well as in farmer fields and modified and adjusted until they became very well adapted, relatively cheap and affordable for average farmers and others concerned with farming. Mr. Norwood pointed out, I think that development of zero tillage machinery has been a key element for dissemination and success of conservation agriculture. And many farmers and manufacturers will depend on this important technology. Indeed, farmer Hani de Bach from Aleppo confirms the success of his experience in conservation agriculture. I sold my old seeder and bought a new zero tillage seeder. Then I planted cumin, lentils, and barley with this technique. I harvested my barley and saw the differences between mine and others. And although I diminished the seed rate to half, but still my method was successful. The Directorate of Agricultural Extension works on the dissemination of conservation agricultural techniques and has conducted many field days and other extension activities where farmers and technicians exchange ideas and views in a participatory manner on conservation agriculture. Indeed, Farooq Al-Khalil, a farmer from Saraqib, Idlib, was the first to adopt the technology of conservation agriculture on his fields. And he tried to apply some components of this technology to his irrigated cotton, which he planted immediately after harvesting of faba bean. In an interview, he says, the principle of conservation agriculture is conserving soil moisture and components. Through our experience in the rain-fed cereals, it was very successful and provided an abundance of production and reduction in labor and manpower. I wanted, following this experience, to apply the technology to irrigated crops. So I did growing cotton after faba bean. Faba bean pods were manually collected. Faba bean residues were chopped and after three days I installed a drip system. Then I seeded, manually, cotton seeds into undisturbed soil because I could not get any seeder into the field. Cotton matured 20 to 25 days earlier. I saved approximately 30% of irrigation water, which meant the equivalent of 3,000 cubic meters of water per hectare, and cotton productivity was increased by 25%. 
With direct seeding and drip irrigation, we reduced pests and insects and got better and more successful crops compared to my neighboring farmers who cultivated and conventionally seeded. Recent high increases in fuel prices and other agricultural production input, as well as the high cost of manpower, will encourage more dissemination and adoption of conservation agriculture technology along the lines of what has happened in other countries. The costs of agricultural production must be reduced and productivity increased to ensure the viability and sustainability of farmers and production systems. Conservation cropping systems are the safest alternative. The best solution to address land degradation water scarcity and high demand for food products. Conservation agriculture, the future of agriculture in Syria.